Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Donovan with High Off Blue Hour, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at keyframing in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So, I got two pictures already pulled into the timeline. We have a background here. This is just a UFO spacecraft, flying saucer, hovering over a city at night. And then our object that we're going to be keyframing is this sci-fi cyberpunk style solo spacecraft. One, oh, well, I guess actually looking at it, maybe more than one person could, could fit in this, but uh, it's just a flying spacecraft, right? So keyframing, to me, keyframing is it's a rather simple thing, but it can get as complicated as you want it to get. But keyframing is a way to animate pretty much anything within an editing suite, in this case, DaVinci Resolve. So how we're gonna set this up here in DaVinci Resolve to access keyframing, uh, the first initial way, the way that I learned how to keyframe, or the first, the first way that I learned how to keyframe in Resolve was over here in your inspector tab, down here in this transform window. You see you got your parameters like zoom, position, rotation, angle, anchor point, all of these things. And all of them have these gray diamonds next to them. Now, anywhere in DaVinci Resolve, when you're in the inspector tab, where a parameter has a gray diamond next to it, that indicates that that parameter can be activated for keyframing. So basically that parameter can be animated. So what I learned how to do, or how I learned how to keyframe initially was through this inspector transform tab. So what we're gonna do, and how you, to in case it, you don't know, which I presume maybe you don't if you're watching this, the way you control the zoom, the position, the rotation angle, all of those things from this particular window is by sliding, put your uh, cursor inside these boxes with the numbers in them on the X and Y axis, and then you, when you get the double arrow and then you just click and hold and slide either to the left or to the right to get your desired effect. So that's zoom, now position down here on the X axis at least. You get that going and then you want to go up and down you got that going zoom in or make bigger zoom out um and you got your anchor point rotation angle all of those things so let me reset everything so how do you keyframe what you want to do is have your playhead at the beginning of where you want your animation to start and then using your ability to control the different parameters. In this case, we're gonna slide the numbers in these boxes. Put your object in the position that you want it to be in at the beginning of the animation, the beginning of the frame. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna make this spacecraft zoom out of the distance and zoom into the foreground and kind of fly right past and slightly up under the imaginary camera, okay? So what we're gonna to do to make that happen in the starting position, we want this to be smaller. So we're gonna zoom it out and we're gonna make it so small that it basically disappears into the distance because we're gonna have it appear out of the distance and zoom in to the foreground, right? So this is the starting position. So when you have your object in the beginning position of that you want it in for the animation, once you put it into that position, you wanna come over here to these gray diamonds and you wanna turn them on, you wanna turn on the diamond for whatever you want to be animated. Now in this case, you can turn on the diamond for just the individual object that you're controlling if you don't want anything else to be affected. But in this case, I'm gonna turn on this diamond at the top that just is like a, for, trans, for the transform section overall. So boom, keyframing is activated for that position. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna move the playhead along the timeline and we're gonna move it to where we want the animation to end and this will be different for everybody whatever case you know whatever they're doing you know their individual creative project it depends but in this case we're going to end the animation right about here because we're going to have this kind of it's going to be ha partially on screen but we're going to have it fade off and so you'll see you'll see how it turns out but we're going to end the animation here so then now we're going to bring this into that ending position. We're gonna bring our object that we're animating to that ending position, the position, the place in the frame we want it to be at the very end of the animation. So let's 
make it bigger because it's getting closer it's closer to the camera now we wanted to kind of zoom right by the camera so it's going to be a little below and just we're going to just kind of do it like that and i might put a fade on it or something to kind of let it really go by so boom now let's go back to the beginning and press play now you see that you can already see what it's going to look like by just me sliding the playhead back but let's go ahead and press play boom so you see and that's very simple but it's a you know effective looking for what it is it's a convincing kind of looking animation you get the effect the desired effect it does exactly did exactly what i wanted it to do and had the intended effect as well it looks like it comes out of the distance and zooms by now it obviously it has that unrealistic way that it stops but if this was like a full-on production you'd have it keep going by or maybe in this case put a little maybe put a slight fade on it and then maybe yeah maybe let it fade a little bit as it goes by so that's a simple animation there a simple way of keyframing from one from one point to another point now I said that was the first way that I learned how to keyframe now another way to access keyframing and basically do the same thing that we just did with the inspector tab is we're going to let me reset everything about the transform as you come down over here and this drop down arrow you click this and in the past I had a video where I talked about dynamic zoom and this being one of the ways you can access dynamic zoom you can also access this button right here where it says transform so you click that and when you click that you get this box in this box around the object that you have highlighted that's the, that's the other thing as well uh, before you click transform make sure you have your object highlighted the object that you want to animate so you get this box around it and you can pretty much do maybe not all everything but a good chunk of what you can do over here in the inspector tab with this transform section you can actually control by just manipulating this box and moving your object around because you can make the object smaller by just manipulating the box with your with your cursor you can uh, rotate slide across the screen different positions all of that type of stuff the only thing that you really still need to use this inspector transform box over here to the right for is to control your uh your keyframe diamonds over here you still need to use those regardless so let me reset this again okay so we're going to do the same animation but we're going to use this box to do the majority of it so once again let's get our playhead at the beginning of where we want the animation to be so in this case just the very beginning of the timeline and we're going to position our spacecraft in the same kind of general area and then again make it so small it basically disappears or almost disappear basically disappears and then you activate the keyframing diamond here and then what you want to do is move the playhead again to the area where you want to be the last kind of frame of the animation so we'll go about right there now once we do that you can take the box that has our uh, object in it we're gonna move it into position and let's go since it's really got that heavy fade on it let's get it about right there and you can see that red line that indicates the path, the trajectory of the animation. So we got it there. Now we're gonna bring the playhead all the way back. And once again, you can, when you slide the playhead backwards along the timeline, you already get a sense of what the animation will be like. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and then to turn off this red, this red line, you wanna just click this transform box right here. Just click it so it's off. That red line goes away. Now let's press play and watch our animation. See, same thing again. This comes out of the distance, comes in, goes past the camera. So that's basically kind of two ways or one and a half ways because you still use the same uh, keyframe 
diamonds of course that you have to use those to keyframe but so kind of one and a half ways of doing keyframing in davinci resolve and let's uh let's take a look at something else here so let's turn this box back on the transform box that shows the trajectory of our flight path basically let's bring this out some and you can also kind of alter this path see it's just a straight line but you see these spaced out kind of circular nodules uh you can grab one you grab it and press it and then you can alter the path now this is going to look really janky when i play it because it's just that's not a natural flight pattern but you can mess around and manipulate the uh the flight path or the path of your animation by moving these uh nodules around so let me take that back some so let's just take a look at this i mean this is going to look real janky because like i said that's not a natural flight pattern but it's just to give you an example of how you can alter some of the some of the things so let's press play on that you see how it kind of does that dip down and then swoop in or whatever oh wait let me go back to the beginning of the playhead let's look at that again And now you can imagine if you were doing a full-blown animation, you'd have sound effects. You'd also have other kind of overlay graphics like um, maybe light beams, trail, smoke trails, sparks, all of those type of things. Um, here, let's, uh, let's look at that again. I, I, I'm easily entertained, I guess. Yeah, so that's, that's it. That's very simple keyframing in DaVinci Resolve. Um, you know i'm trying to see if i'm if there's something i'm leaving out but this is really just supposed to be the basics just a simple introduction to it and i think i covered uh pretty much everything that needs to be covered in terms of just getting started with keyframing just the basics of how you uh, manipulate things and how you access keyframing now you'll have to kind of experiment with timing and things like that you're going to want to pay attention to how long uh the animation you know where your points are in the timeline like this is a five second animation and so you want to keep track of like when you bring videos and different things into your timeline you want to keep track of how long things are because timing plays a big part in your keyframing in terms of how it looks and how it comes across you're going to want to be aware of your timing and whatnot and you just got to experiment you know everything that i've done with it i kind of figured out by playing around with it like figuring out which timing works what you know what works best it's a lot of experimentation that goes with it but uh you can produce some pretty fun results in terms of animation so that is keyframing introduction to keyframing in davinci resolve i hope i covered everything that needed to be covered for a beginner's type uh video like this for keyframing i keep kind of i keep staring at everything wondering like did i miss anything because the thing about these type of things is there's a lot of stuff that i know how to do and i kind of have to remember like did i communicate that like just because i know it in my head doesn't mean i communicated it to you guys so i'm trying to make sure i do that obviously as always if you have any questions you know leave questions comments all of that type of stuff but i think i covered the very basics of how to get started with keyframing and resolve so there it is thank you for watching i will catch you on the next one